Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we're covering the names of Al Wali, Al Mawla, and Al Afu. Um, and this is our 26th session. Inshallah, we're going to be uh, covering the last few names of Allah uh, in these final few days. Uh, so, inshallah, we benefit especially in these last 10 nights uh, of Ramadan. So, to begin with Al Wali and Al Mawla, uh, Al Wali is oftentimes translated as the ally or the guardian. Uh, Al Mawla is translated as the protector and the patron. Uh, though these uh, translations can sometimes be interchangeable or seem interchangeable because they have the same root uh, for both words of wow, lam, and ya. Uh, and this root has this meaning of being very close, to be without barrier. Um, and the difference is that Al Wali is the one who takes care of one's affairs, takes care of one's affairs. Um, a minor's guardian in Arabic is referred to as Wali Amr, uh, the guardian of affairs, because they are, uh, they take care of affairs of a child, um, someone who's trusted and close. Uh, and Imam Ibn al-Qayyim says that uh, the basis of this relationship of wilaya um, or of this uh, aspect of protection or uh, trusteeship is love uh, because the opposite uh, is is essentially you know one who's an enemy or one who is in opposition to that person is based in hatred and so uh, this allyship is one that fosters closeness and it's it's based upon this love uh, and Al Ghazali says that uh, Al Wali is also the one who is uh, the one who loves and the one who protects but is uh, the 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 lover the protector Al Mola on the other hand. Uh, is the one towards whom a person inclines, relies upon, and the one whom, uh, with one whom seeks protection as well. And so a mawla is also maybe somebody with uh, authority in a sense. And so the difference, al-wali is the one who takes care of our affairs, al-mawla is the one upon whom we rely. Uh, and so the hadith of the Prophet uh, that, that kind of helps kind of bring the differences about uh, a little bit here is sometimes seen that al-wali is for everybody. Uh, of humanity, uh, that Allah will take care of all the affairs of humanity, whether they're Muslim, non-Muslim, believer, not believer, and al-Mawla is specifically to the believers, and it comes from a hadith tradition of the Prophet after the Battle of Uhud, when they're being taunted at by the Meccans, uh, where Allah, where the Prophet tells them to respond back, saying that Allah is our patron, Mawlana, uh, and you have no patron, you being the Meccans, uh, you have no patron, uh, that there's no Mawla for you. Um, and that uh, the Mawla is for the believers, while Al-Wali is for everyone. And so what do these names mean for us? It means that Allah at the end of the day is our guardian, that Allah has our back, that uh, Allah will take care of our affairs with love and with care, uh, that Allah desires closeness to us and Allah desires closeness from us. And for us to cultivate this relationship, we must focus on what Allah loves, not just the actions, but intentions wise, not just that which is superficial, but that which uh, is, is internal as well, that which is really uh, doing the heart work. And so in order to understand this concept of wilaya, in order to understand this concept of, uh, work of, of accepting Allah as our mola, uh, and to acknowledge uh, and appreciate this, uh, we need to go beyond the superficial. It's not just the external protection that Allah gives us, but also the internal strength and tranquility that enables us to withstand hardships. Uh, there's always going to be struggles in the world. Uh, we have the example of the Prophet Sallallahu who was, despite being chosen by Allah, specifically designated by Allah, and so many of the other prophets that still had to go through so much hardship uh, in their life. And so when, when we live with this name, when we uh, embody these names, uh, when, we, when we really uh, bring our hearts close to these names, we realize that Allah is our ally even during our struggles. And when we work uh, to, to not just become closer to Allah, when we work to become of those considered the awliya, uh, those who are close and near Allah, uh, we, 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 we struggle and we want to work to become knowing that that's something that uh, is accessible. Uh, if we if we set our hearts and we set our actions towards it, uh, and ultimately we want to make sure we keep the company of the righteous process, I'm said that you know you're upon the religion of your friends uh, or your companions. So we want to see, with respect to uh, not just the internal aspects but the external, what what's our environment like? Are we making things conducive 
to becoming close to Allah. So remember with these names that Allah is your protector. Allah is the one who is your guardian, your ally, uh, and that uh, this this relationship of of allyship of closeness um, this is uh, connected through under a concept of and a mutual feeling of love and closeness. And so we want to lift that up, inshallah, uh, as we go to our next name, which helps to even bring us closer to Allah. Uh, if we if we really and truly embody it, we really and truly uh, seek its benefits. And that's the name of Al-Afu. Uh, Al-Afu uh, can lift up this concept that, you know, it might be difficult for us to move on from our past uh, that we might not be proud of in certain instances, uh, or for us to carry sometimes uh, things that we have with guilt or resentment or fear based on our past deeds. Our past might haunt us, uh, and Al-Afu is the one that gives us a way to start anew, as Allah is the pardoner. Uh, the Arabic root of this word has the meanings of complete removal, of obliteration of something, even its traces to just leave something without a trace uh, and in distinguishing it from similar names like Allah being the forgiving uh, or the one who gives forgiveness or anything similar to, to this aspect of pardoning of sins, there's a subtle difference uh, when we ask for forgiveness or maghfira, we ask uh, Allah to cover our sins, to protect uh, us from the effects of our sins and even though we committed the sin, we ask Allah to not take us to task for those sins. When we ask uh, for Allah in Al-Afu, we ask for Allah to completely erase the sin to such a degree that its traces are wiped clean, uh, like a slate uh, with the, of which that has been wiped and there's no questions about it. So there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that speaks to the difference about, of, of the two a little bit. There's two different hadith. Uh, the first hadith talk about, uh, talks about how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, lifts up on the day of judgment, how Allah will uh, have a conversation essentially with, with a believer and will lift up how uh, Allah concealed the sins for that believer, um, despite the fact of, you know, reminding them that this was a sin that, that was committed uh, and the, the believer feels shame about it, but Allah has lifted up that that, seal, that sin has been concealed from others um, after reminding them about it and that there will be no shame for them on this day. And that's forgiveness. Uh, and that's Allah uh, being al-Ghafur and giving that forgiveness. Um, and then there's a hadith of the Prophet where uh, he, uh, he he relays that a large number of the ummah will enter paradise, around 70,000 or so will enter paradise without reckoning. And the Prophet will then continue to ask for more, continue to ask for more, uh, and they'll continue to enter without reckoning. Uh, this is erasure of sins. This is al-afu, al um, in, in a sense, at work uh, in erasing those sins, the major sins especially. And so as we are in the last 10 days of Ramadan and about to close out Ramadan, we want to lift up this uh, this name specifically in the last 10 days. Uh, there's a hadith that uh, is related of what do we, of what a companion asking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what should we say during Laylatul Qadr? What should we say when we're searching for Laylatul Qadr? And uh, there's a famous uh, dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lifts up that says, Allahumma inna ka afu an tuhibbul afafu anni. That, oh Allah, you are the one who pardons souls. Uh, you're the one who pardons and you love to pardon, so pardon me. Um, and again, that dua is, Allahumma inna ka afu an tuhibbul afafu anni. And, uh, and this dua signals reset. It signals a start from scratch. Uh, the, the, the lifting up of this name, um, especially in Ramadan, as we are kind of going at the end of this, not only is this, are we asking, praying for pardoning, praying for a cleaning of sins, we're asking Allah for a specific pardon for ourselves. Um, and so uh, as, as Ramadan is coming to a close, we, we ask Allah to allow Ramadan to be a time of reset. To allow us to have our slates wiped clean, to allow us to have a uh, a blank canvas again, to allow us to not be consumed by the guilt of what we used to do, uh, but to make this last period, the last few days that we have, at least one in which we enter the uh, Ramadan uh, even more pure uh, than we did, or sorry, that we close Ramadan even more pure uh, and clean in, in in the spiritual sense and any other sense uh, than we did when we entered it and. Uh, that we leave it in a higher state of being. And so when we live with this name, we want to make sure that we don't let our past prevent us from moving forward. We ask Allah, especially this during the last 10 days, to pardon us and we lift this up uh, because this is a very powerful dua that regardless of what we've done, 
we would like to have our sins wiped clean for us uh, with, without any uh, trace, and then to also be resurrected without any trace of those sins. So inshallah, we ask Allah to not just be our ally, to be that uh, entity that is close to us, to be the one who is close to us and our protector and taking care of our affairs and being there that we can rely on, but also that Allah covers us, that Allah not only covers us, but Allah wipes clean for us the mistakes that we make, that Allah does not bring us to account for these. And similarly, to, for us to be enabled to be the, peop, uh, the protector of other people, to be the ally of other people, to be those who can pardon other people for, so that we may also receive pardon. Inshallah, until next time, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu.